ओके यू आर एबल टू सी मी हेलो क्लियर शेल आई स्टार्ट दक्षिणा सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता स्मरिया गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम परिज्ञानाश्रम श्री गुरुशंकर परिज्ञानाश्रम शंकर सदुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सद्गुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं सहनावत सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओम शांति 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 सर्वेदात सिद्धांत गोचर तम गोचर गोविंद परमानंद सद्गु प्रणतस्म्यहम नाउ द गुरु इज टॉकिंग टू शिष्या अबाउट आत्म अनात्म विवेचनम और आत्म अनात्म विवेका एंड फॉर दिस here for this process of atma anatma viveka he already said that like i separate a munja ishika a munja grass from its you know the ishika or the tender stem within a munja grass how i have to separate it carefully from that prickly layer of the cover around that you know tender grass in the same way atma anatma viveka has to be done and here for anatma भगवान शंकराचार्य इज टेकिंग द पंचकोश विवेका एज ए सेड इन द प्रीवियस सेशन दैट तैतरीय उपनिषद टॉक्स अबाउट पंचकोश विवेका सी डिफरेंट उपनिषद्स डिफरेंट श्रुतीज टॉक अबाउट डिफरेंट प्रक्रियाज वॉट इज अ प्रक्रिया ए मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ टीचिंग दैट इज शरीर त्रय विवेका इज वन टेकिंग द थ्री बॉडीज द स्थूल शरीर सूक्ष्म शरीर एंड कारण शरीर एज द अनात्मा विच वॉज ऑलरेडी डन बाय भगवान शंकराचार्य इन द प्रीवियस सेशन देन देर इज वन मोर प्रक्रिया प्रक्रिया मीन्स अ मेथडोलॉजी और अ मॉड्यूल ऑफ टीचिंग वेर द सेम बॉडी स्थूल शरीर सूक्ष्म शरीर कारण शरीर इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फाइव लेयर्स इट इज एज दो द आत्मा इज कवर्ड बाय फाइव लेयर्ड अनात्मा and this five layered anatma is described in the form of the five koshas it is called as the annamaya kosha which is the gross physical body the sthula shariram is called as annamaya kosha and we already saw that in the last session how the annamaya kosha was described as anatma it is said that this gross physical body or this annamaya kosha is called annamaya kosha because it is born out of food the food eaten by the parents gives rise to this fetus and this fetus grows in the womb of the mother with the help of the food and when the child comes out also it grows with the help of food therefore annena vardhan annena vardhate this shariram is annena vardhate therefore it is called as annamaya so that which is born out of food that which grows because of food that which is sustained by food and ultimately that which gets destroyed and merges with the food only into the food cycle later that is called as annamaya can i the atma be annamaya kosha no it was seen in the last session 
Atma cannot be called Annamaya Kosha. Why? Because this Annamaya Kosha is gross physical matter. Atma has no matter whatsoever in it. Atma is non-matter, pure consciousness. Whereas this Annamaya Kosha is pure matter principle, which is born out of food and sustained by food and gets resolved. This body gets resolved into ultimately food. And what kind of a body is this? Is this? Aniyata Svabhava, Jata Kshana Kshana Gunaha. Every moment it is changing. It has got different attributes every moment and it changes. Aniyata Svabhava. Aniyata means that which is so unpredictable. This physical body is unpredictable. We have all seen that. Today I am all right. Tomorrow I am not all right. One year back the physical body was perfectly healthy. And now I find that the physical body is riddled with so many rogas. Maybe one year back a particular physical body was alive. And today that particular physical body is not even alive. Therefore it is Aniyata Swabhava. That which keeps changing. All the time this physical body is changing. It is Vikari. Therefore I the Atma cannot be this Vikari physical body or Anamaya Kosha. Not only that. It is seen by me and the others also. Therefore, it is Drishyam. So, physical body or Anamaya Kosha being a matter principle, number one. Secondly, constantly changing Vikaritvat. Thirdly, it is an object of my perception, Drishyatvat. Therefore, I, the Atma, cannot be the Anamaya Kosha. Of course, the Anamaya Kosha depends on its existence on me the Atma. Therefore, since Annamaya Kosha does not have an independent existence of its own and depends on me the Atma for its sentience, therefore Annamaya Kosha becomes the Anatma. It is one of the layers. So with gross physical body called Annamaya Kosha, the gross physical body is, is over now. Now Bhagwan comes to the next three layers which are a part of Sukshma Sharira. We have seen all this in Tattva Bodha. If we read Tattva Bodha, we are aware of what the Sukshma Sharira is. The Sukshma Sharira contains the prana. The Sukshma Sharira contains the mind. The Sukshma Sharira contains the buddhi and all the indriyas. Therefore, Sukshma Sharira is a conglomerate of the five sense organs of perception, Jnana Indriyas, five Karmendriyas, prana, Manaha and Buddhi. That is what the Tattva Bodha also said. The 17, you know, parted is Sukshma Sharira. So here also, Bhagwan Shankaracharya says that here the Sukshma Sharira, according to the Shruti, according to our scriptures, the Sukshma Sharira is divided into three layers. What is that? The first layer of Sukshma Sharira is called as Pranamaya Kosha. This Pranamaya Kosha is immediately interior to the Annamaya Kosha. And as I said in the last session, it is like these Channapatna dolls where you can open one doll and you will find a similar structure inside. Like that, we may have five or six layers of dolls being present here. Similarly, it is said that this Annamaya Kosha has got a particular shape and a particular size. So the next layers go according to the same shape. They go according to the same size. So the Sukshma Sharira doesn't jet out of the Stula Sharira. So the Sukshma Sharira, the Pranamaya, the Manomaya, the Vijnanamaya, which are also the division of Sukshma Sharira, they do not go out of the Stula Sharira. Annamaya Kosha is pervaded by these three sheets. What is the immediate sheet? Pervading internally. Internally, the entire Annamaya is pervaded in the same shape, in the same size as that of Annamaya. And what is this called as? This is called as the Pranamaya Kosha. If Annamaya Kosha is the anatomical sheet, anatomical body, Pranamaya Kosha is the physiological body. Because all the physiological functions of the body are taken care of by this Pranamaya Kosha. So earlier in the 165th verse, which we completed in the last session, we saw karmendriyaihi panchabihi achintoyam. That means this pranamaya kosha achintoyam means it is, you know, achintaha. It is endowed. 
it is associated it comes along with so this is what is called anchitaha panchabihi anchitaha panchabhi ranchitaha not achitaha panchabhi ranchitaha anchitaha means that which is endowed with or associated with all the five karmendriyas and also what it is prano bhavet pranamaya pranamaya hatu kosha this kosha is called as pranamaya because it is associated with all the physiological pranas and also associated with the five karmendriyas then yena atmavan annamayo anupurnaha this annamaya kosha is as though completely filled by this pranamaya kosha it is as though internally it is filled and pervaded by this pranamaya kosha and all the activity actually happens all the activity is planned and all the activity along with the karmendriyas happens in pranamaya kosha but the pranamaya kosha uses the annamaya kosha to execute all the actions so here it is says pravartate asau sakala kriyasu sakala kriyasu pravartate all the kriyas all the activities all the actions start in the pranamaya and the pranamaya kosha executes these actions by taking the help of the gross physical body or annamaya now can i be can the atma be the pranamaya kosha can i be the pranamaya can i be that kosha the very fact that i say kosha it means it is something which is jada see let us imagine a kosha means a person wears a banyan okay over that he wears a shirt over that he may wear a sweater over that he may wear a coat now what have we found there are four layers in which this person has dressed himself so the coat is also of the same size and shape as the body and the sweater is also of the same shape and size as the body as the torso and inside whatever clothes also he is wearing is are of the same size and same shape as the physical body similarly we have to consider all these koshas inwardly if annamaya kosha has this particular size and shape this whole pranamaya kosha is as though pervading and filling the entire annamaya kosha it is almost in the same shape filling like i gave an example if i fill a bottle with water or if there is if there is or if there is space within the bottle that space is almost of the size and shape of the bottle that water which i put in a bottle is almost of the shape and you know in the size of that bottle itself though it does not have any shape of its own similarly the pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha being the sukshma sharira do not have a definite shape of their own but this entire sukshma sharira the first layer of which is called as pranamaya kosha the entire sukshma sharira is divided into three koshas pranamaya the physiological sheet manomaya the mental sheet and the vijnanamaya the intellectual sheet the same sukshma sharira and since this sukshma sharira does not have a shape of its own it takes the shape of the physical body therefore the pranamaya kosha also resembles the annamaya kosha and it is where all the actions have started now can i be this pranamaya kosha that is what is answered in the next verse in the 166th verse it is answered that i the atma cannot be the pranamaya kosha what is the logic involved here same logic as that we saw in annamaya in all these five koshas the same logic will be talked about all the koshas are matter principle number 1 all the koshas are vikari constantly changing number 2 all the koshas the five koshas are jada number 3 all the koshas are nothing but the drishyam or the object of my perception therefore none of the koshas i can be i am not any of the five koshas i am that kosha vilakshana pancha kosha vilakshana atma that is this is how the teaching is going to be so whatever we saw in the annamaya kosha the same logic the same argument will be talked about for all the further koshas that are going to be talked about so here he says in the verse number 166 he says 
नईवात्मा प्राणमयो वायु विकार गंता गंता वायुवत अंतर्बिश यस्मांचिवापी न वेति इष्टम अनिष्ट स्वंवाचन्यम परतंत्र सो हि से आई कैनॉट बी दिस प्राणमय कोश भाई नई व आत्मा अभी प्राणमय द आत्मा और आई कैनॉट बी द प्राणमय भाई because it is vayu vikara vayu vikara it is a vikara or this is made up of vayu and what is vayu vayu is a element vayu is a matter principle and pranamaya kosha is a vayu vikara that is why it is called maya there is a pratyaya there is a you know a thing in sanskrit language called mayat pratyaya it means it is a vikara it is something which is changing annamaya is anna vikara pranamaya is vayu vikara since it is a vayu vikara it is something which is a changing thing brought about from the vayu i cannot be that atma ganta aganta vayuvad antar bahihi eshah okay ganta antah it goes in bahihi agantah it comes out so what is this it is continuously moving can atma move can atma come out or come in we have already seen that in bhagavad gita atma is all pervading it cannot move from one place to the other there is no movement possible in atma therefore this vayu this prana i can see i am breathing in antah gantah bahihi agantah it keeps coming in and going out coming in and going out if this is the vayu which is coming in and going out which is called as prana then how can i be that prana then he says yasmat kinchit kvapi na veti ishtam anishtam this pranamaya kosha is not affected by either conducive situations or non conducive situations it may be sukha situation it may be dukha situation it may be very hot it may be cold it may be uncomfortable whatever it is the prana keeps going in and coming out going in and coming out the pranamaya kosha does all its activities according to whatever it has to do whether there is ishtam or anishtam it does not have any kind of an ishta anishta for itself that i should not now be breathing because it is anishta i should be breathing now because it is ishta that something is not there at all and in the last line he says swam va anyam va kinchan kinchana nityam paratantra it is always paratantra it always depends upon others see one interesting thing i can tell you that we feel that when death takes place the prana goes out of the physical body the entire sukshma sharira goes out of the physical body therefore the prana has also gone out of the physical body and the common thing to say a person is dead is to say that the prana has gone out that means the person is dead that means does this prana have the independence to cause the death or the life of an individual is it independent is prana independent in giving life to the individual or is it independent in taking away the life and giving death to the individual no it is not that is why it is called as paratantra then what does it depend upon it depends upon prarabdha supposing my life you know is 70 years 70 years is what is taken from the point of view of the time of our knowledge here whatever time principle but how is the life span of a person decided when does a vayu vikara pranamaya goes out and never comes what do we say he breathed his he breathed his last that's what we say so what is the meaning of that breathed his last means the breath went out and never came in again it was just he breathed out and never breathed in again now if prana is independent then the prana can decide as to how long i am going to keep this particular human being alive but the prana is not independent how long the prana should function in a per- person 
and keep this person alive depends upon the prarabdha and the prarabdha clock is ticking and what is that prarabdha clock in the prana which keeps ticking it is said that one breathing in and one breathing out one inhalation and one exhalation is considered as one breath breathing in once breathing out once is considered as one breath and we have heard of this udana vayu i said reversing prana udana vayu is the prana which really takes care of the leaving of the physical body at the time of death so what is this udana this udana prana is the clock and the udana prana starts clicking countdown you know one breath udana prana clicking one one tick backwards so with every breath the udana prana is tick 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 it is going backwards from the minute one is born the process of death has started the udana prana the udana vayu starts clicking ticking from the time of the birth and then what is the time sense of this udana vayu prarabdha it is said that according to this particular person's prarabdha this particular person has to breathe so many times one breath in and one breath out is breathing once so a person has to breathe in so many millions or crores of times and that much the udana clock will keep going one count one count one count backwards 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 and when the udana clock has ticked its last it exactly coincides with the end of one's prarabdha when the prarabdha has ended the udana clock has come to the zero and the prana never comes back again that is why here he says pranaha nityam paratantraha it is always paratantra it is not independent prana cannot decide the life of a person it is decided by the clicking of the udana vayu the udana prana that's why udana prana does not have any function generally only in cases of vomiting loose motions and things like that when reversing activity has to take place coughing you know reversing activity or at the time of death udana prana is active so every click of the udana prana is one prarabdha worked out one prarabdha worked out one prarabdha worked out therefore it is said here is swam va anyam va kinchana nityam paratantraha it is always paratantra it depends upon the prarabdha it is not sufficient enough by itself to take care of the life of a person therefore being a vayu vikara being something which is coming in and going out constantly changing i am aware of my breath moving in and moving out others are also aware of my breathing that is why the doctors can understand and make out that i am alive because the you know prana is moving in and moving out since it is vikari since it is vayu vikara it is jada it is paratantra drishyam it is something which i can observe which i can see therefore i am not the pranamaya kosha then with this the pranamaya kosha is also over next the second layer of sukshma sharira comes what is called as the mental sheath or the manomaya kosha what is this manomaya kosha antakarana itself you know we have seen that there is something called as internal instrument or antakarana the antakarana is divided into manaha and buddhi mind and intellect so the mind is taken to be the manomaya kosha the mind is taken to be the manomaya kosha and what is this manomaya kosha that is what is going to be talked about in the next verse 167th verse it is going to be talked about manomaya let us see what it talks about ज्ञानेन्द्रिया च मन मनोमय सैकोशो ममी वस्तु विकल्पेतु संज्ञादिभेदकलना कल तो बलियाकोशूर्य विजृंभते यस्ट लाइक प्राणमयकोश 
pervaded the entire Annamaya Kosha from inside, this Manomaya Kosha is also Anyaha Antaraha, Anyontara Kosha. Anyontara means what? That which is subtler than the Pranamaya, that which is internal to Pranamaya, and that which pervades the Pranamaya. So, Tat Purva Kosham Abhipurya Vijrambate, last line. So, this Manomaya, what does it do? It literally pervades the entire Pranamaya Kosha, being subtler and being inside the Pranamaya Kosha. Therefore, Tat Purva Kosham means which Purva Kosham? Pranamaya Kosham Abhipurya. Having completed this Pranamaya Kosha, Vijrambate. It shines, yaha, this Manomaya Kosha. So what is this Manomaya Kosha? It is a combination of the Jnanendriyani along with the mind. Just like Pranamaya Kosha was Karmendriyani with the Prana, the Manomaya Kosha is all the organs of perception. So he says in the first line, Jnanendriyani cha manas cha manomaya hasya. All the five Jnanendriyas, what are they? The Shrotru, okay, then Tvak, then, you know, our eyes and then our Rasanendriya and Granendriya. Shrotram, then Tvak, then Chakshuhu, Rasanendriya, Granendriya. The organs of perception in the form of the ears, you know, and the feeling skin and the eyes and the tasting tongue and also the smell, the sense of smell. All these are got by the, all these, you know, actions are done by the Jnanendriyas. The five Jnanendriyas are called as the Jnana Indriyani, Jnanaya Indriyani. These Indriyas are meant for knowledge. These five Indriyas feel or the experience, they go and fall on the world of objects outside and they give me the signals as to what they have seen. Therefore, Jnanaya Indriyani Iti Jnanendriyani. For the sake of the knowledge of the mind and intellect, these Jnanendriyani, they are going to pick up the senses, pick up the stimuli from the outside world and they are going to transfer them to the Manomaya Kosha and Vijnanamaya Kosha. Therefore, this Antakarana, which is divided into, it's a very subtle difference. Manomaya and Vijnanamaya, they are not very different. Manomaya is the mind because it has got certain different kinds of thoughts, vrittis. And Vijnanamaya is the intellect, the buddhi, which has got little different types of vrittis or thought. We have already seen in Tattva Bodha, the Manomaya Kosha has Sankalpatmika, Vikalpatmika thoughts. It makes a Sankalpa and then it doubts, it makes a Vikalpa. Have I locked the house or not? I think I have locked the house. No, no, no. I think I'm not very sure. I don't think I have. I think I should go and see. So this kind of sankalpa, vikalpa. Yes, I think I have done it. No, no, no. I think I have not done it. I think this is the thing. No, no. I don't think this is the thing. This is what is called as sankalpatmaka, vikalpatmaka vrittis. They belong to the mind. The emotions belong to the mind. Correct? The emotions, raga, dvesha, security, insecurity, all these belong to the mind. So the emotions belong to the mind, doubt belongs to the mind and vacillating, wavering, sankalpa, vikalpa belongs to the mind and also the capacity to differentiate various names and forms also belongs to the mind. That is what is going to be told here in this verse. He says, jnanendriyani cha manas cha manomaya hasyat. The five jnanendriyas along with the mind these two together are called as the Manomaya Koshaha. Koshaha mama aham iti vastu vikalpa hetuhu. That means what? This is the mind, this is the kosha, the mind, which differentiate between I, aham and mama. This is mine. This is not mine. This belongs to me. This doesn't belong to me. What is this? Is this something which I know? Is this something which I don't know? So all these things, this kosha, mama ahamiti, I and mine, I and mine, not I, not mine. What is it that understands I and mine? It is the manomaya kosha. Vastu vikalpahe tuhu. 
it is the mind which is capable of dividing the entire world into i the subject and object vikalpa means that the subject i the knower i and the object the known the druk i and the drishyam world so it is the mind which says i see everything it is the mind which says this is i this is not i it is the mind which says i am the body i am the mind i am the sense complex it is the mind which says it is the world the world is satyam it is the mind which says this is a pot this is not a glass this is called as a pot this is called as a glass the name of this person is a or b or whatever it is this is not the name of a person have i done something properly i don't think i have done it let me check it whether i have done all these the mind is the one whose thoughts are able to distinguish subject object vikalpa it is the thoughts of the mind which are able to distinguish between i and mine it is the mind the thoughts in the mind which are able to name the objects and distinguish and differentiate the objects so he says mama aham iti vastu vikalpa hetu ho and sanyadi bheda kalana kalitah that means what sanyadi sanya means names the mind is able to differentiate between two names the mind is able to differentiate between two forms the mind is the one see switch says that oh this person is sudha this person is you know x somebody else it is the one the thoughts the mind is able to really distinguish sanyadi bheda kalana kalitah sanya means names the bhedas in the names sanyadi bheda kalana it is able to really differentiate between two different objects differentiate between the two names when it is active when the mind is active in sleep the mind is inactive so i am not able to really say anything about it but in the jagrit avastha in the swapna avastha also the mind is capable of distinguishing and differentiating various names and various forms so he says sanyadi bheda kalana kalitah not only that it is baliyan baliyan means what it is very very powerful the mind is very powerful the mind can literally take me for a ride when i sit for meditation if the mind is not able to be concentrated it can take me anywhere it is the mind which draws the entire physical body wherever it wants it is the mind which makes the body go after something it is the emotions in the mind which make the body go after something so it is baliyan that is why in bhagavad gita arjuna told it is baliyan dhridavat pramati balavat dhridah this mind this manah chanchalam hi mana krishna pramati balavat dhridah it is definitely balavat it is baliyan it can literally like a storm the mind can take me away so it is baliyan and tat purva kosham abhipurya vijrambate yah this mind sheet or the manomaya kosha fills the entire annamaya and pranamaya from inside it is the manomaya actually which differentiates between the things and makes me run after these things and with the help of the pranamaya it executes the action if there is a doubt in my mind if i have to check on the doubt then the mind vrittis stimulate the pranamaya the pranamaya executes the action using the help of the body that means what all these layers are involved in executing a particular action so is this possible that i am this manomaya because this manomaya looks much more sentient than pranamaya and this manomaya looks as if it is capable of independently thinking it looks as though you know it is capable of making differences between different names and forms does it mean that i am this atma i uh, atma am i manomaya am i this mind that is what many people say atma is a body some people say atma is prana that many people say many philosophers say atma is not different from mind atma is mind and some philosophers say atma is nothing but intellect atma is nothing but prakriti or maya but here what bhagwan shankaracharya says is depending upon what the shruti says i the atma is 
none of the five koshas i mean the third kosha no anamaya we have already dealt with and said bhai i am not anamaya same reasons we gave to see say why i am not the pranamaya now i the atma am not even manomaya why the same reasons are given here as to why i am not the manomaya and that comes in the next verse in the 183rd verse 183 verse number 183 here he says manomayo na pi bhavet paratma परिणामी भावात दुखात्मक विषयत्वहेतो हो दृष्टा ही दृश्यात्मतया न दृष्ट सो एम आई मनोमया इज दिस आत्मा मनोमय कोशा इट कैन नॉट बी द सेम रीजन हैव टू बी टॉक्ड अबाउट मनोमय इज विकारी इट हैज गॉट अ बिगिनिंग इट चेंजेस कॉन्स्टेंटली and it stops the the vrittis or the thoughts of the mind are just like frames of a camera like the frames of a camera one vritti is there it is the frame of the camera next immediately the frame changes one more thing comes like that every vritti vritti means thought every vritti every thought in the mind is like a changing camera frame therefore the mind is constantly changing the emotions are changing the doubts are changing and at every situation the mind is constantly changing with regards to the thoughts samshayas and vikalpas are different the subject object divisions are different in different situations names and forms distinguishing and distinguishing names and forms differentiation is different at different times emotions are happening today i am very happy right at this moment but maybe in another half an hour there can be change maha changes mind is the one which is so very chanchala constantly changing continuously changing so he says manomayo na pi bhavet paratma paratma or paramatma or i the atma this pratyagatma i the atma cannot be the manomaya kosha why i the atma cannot be the manomaya kosha he says adyanta vatvat parinami bhavat the mind the thoughts in the mind begin they go through changes and they end no thought is continuous no thought is all the time there there is only one thought the i i aham i know every thought of the mind there is this sakshi chaitanya atma which lights up every thought but the thought itself is temporary the thoughts are coming the thoughts are going so there are parinami bhavat there are parinamis constantly changing adhyanta vatvat the mind begins when the person wakes up the mind begins throughout the waking time the mind has different thoughts different emotions different vikalpas different doubts it has got and when it goes into a swapna prapancha this mind itself projects all those vasanas which have been accumulated from the memories this mind is the one which projects a different swapna sharira and in deep sleep it is the very same mind which is incapable of perceiving anything so the mind is constantly changing in all the three avasthas the mind is constantly changing it has an adi it begins when i wake up and it ends when i sleep again begins when i wake up changes constantly throughout my jagrat and swapna avastha therefore this constantly changing mind with constantly changing thoughts and this adhyantavantaha every thought having its beginning having its changes having its ends therefore i cannot be the mind the mind is represented by the thoughts that arise in the mind therefore i cannot be either the thoughts arising in the mind nor can i be the mind itself and what is it dukhatmakatvad vishayatva hetu ho dukhatmakatvad it is dukha hetu ho the mind is the one which is constantly moving from one thing to the other and it is dukha hetu ho mind is not sukha hetu that means is there no sukha at all does the mind not experience any happiness at all vedanta says yes it is a precursor to the dukha 
whatever happiness it you know it attains later on we'll see when we come to anandamaya as to from where actually the happiness comes actually happiness doesn't come from manomaya actual happiness comes from somewhere else but temporarily the mind is reflecting this happiness this happiness is a temporary happiness it is not something which is all the time there therefore dukhatmakatva it is dukhatmakatva it is there vishayatva hetu ho it is something which is the hetu for vishayatva it is the hetu because of which i can differentiate the vishayas which give me happiness and unhappiness drishta hi drishyam atmataya na drishtaha i am not the i am the drishta of the mind also the atma is the seer of the mind also therefore what is the mind it is drishyam it is the object of my perception i can clearly make out isn't it i can make out my moods i can make out my unhappiness i can make out my doubts i can make out that my mind is running here and there nobody has to tell me it can be even observed by others also that you are depressed today you are not talking today you are looking very you know unhappy today my emotions can be felt by other people also so manomaya kosha is a drishyam because it is available to me also for perception and sometimes my minds my thoughts are available for others also in the form of my moods in the form of my emotions maybe they may not be able to understand exactly what i am thinking but at least my moods and you know my emotions many times are very very obvious to the others also so drishta hi drishya atmataya na drishtah i am the drishta i means who the atma is the drishta the one who is the seer whereas this manomaya is the drishyam it is drishyam then with this the manomaya is also negated as anatma so we have seen here now the annamaya kosha is negated as atma it is you know annamaya kosha atma is not annamaya annamaya is anatma atma is not pranamaya pranamaya is anatma atma is not manomaya manomaya or the mental sheath the emotional sheath is also anatma now the last sheath in the sukshma sharira is called as the vijnanamaya vijnanamaya is the buddhi or the internet as i said the buddhi and the mind cannot be very very easily differentiated because manaha and buddhi are nothing but the functional aspects of the antakarana antakarana has the manaha and the buddhi depending upon the thoughts it is said that this thought is the thought of the mind or this thought is the thought of the intellect we have seen that sankalpa vikalpatmaka vritti is manomaya kosha nischayatmika thought i decide a decisive thought means the buddhi let us take that same example have i locked the house or not the manomaya will keep on fluctuating and vacillating yes i have done no i am not done yes i have done no i am not done but it will never come to a conclusion here the buddhi will come to a conclusion since i am not sure of whether i have locked the house or not i will go back and check this nischayatmika buddhi this nischayatmika vritti is the vritti or the thought process of the intellectual sheath or the vijnanamaya kosha the vijnanamaya kosha is called vijnanamaya because it is something which is a knower it is the one which is able to understand buddhi is the one which is able to know and what does this layer contain what does this buddhi or buddhi or what you call as the vijnanamaya kosha or buddhi kosha vijnanamaya what does it contain again he says here in the verse number 185 verse number sorry 184 verse number 184 in the verse number 184 in the original what does he say buddhi 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 indriyai sardham savritti kartr lakshanah vijnanamaya koshasyat pumsa samsara karanam 
So what is this Vijnanamaya Kosha? We have come to the fourth Kosha already. What is this Vijnanamaya Kosha? He says, talks about the Vijnanamaya. He says, Buddhihi buddhindriyaihi sardham. Buddhi indriyas are also another name for jnana indriyas, jnana indriyas. Jnana indriyas are also called as buddhi indriyas. Now, the manomaya and vijnanamaya being very subtly different from each other, the manomaya is also supported by the jnana indriyas. The vijnanamaya or the buddhi is also supported by the jnana indriyas. Therefore, he says, buddhi hi buddhi hi sardham. This buddhi or the intellect which is endowed with or which is associated with the indriyas, buddhi indriyas, sardham means associated with. Savritti kartra lakshanaha. This is the vijnanamaya kosha is the doer. Manomaya is not the doer. It only goes on vacillating. It only goes on thinking. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Should this be done? Should that be done? Ultimately, what decides that should be done or should not be done? Definitely. So either I do it or I don't do it. So it is that vritti in this Vijnanamaya Kosha, which is Kartra Lakshanaha. In the first line it says, Kartra Lakshanaha. It belongs to the, it is of the nature of Karta. So when I say I have done it, I am going to do it. I have to do it. It is the buddhi which has decided to be a doer. Therefore, in all our transaction, the mind gets all the resources or inputs from the sense organs. And the same inputs are projected or handed over to the buddhi. And the buddhi, along with the buddhi indriyas, decides upon what is to be done. Therefore, Vijnanamaya Kosha is the Kartra Lakshanaha. It has got the Lakshanas of the Kartra. And this is called as Vijnanamaya Kosha Hasya. So who is the Vijnanamaya? The doer. Not simply the one who imagines. Not simply the one who emotes. In Buddhi, in intellect, there are no emotions. There is no vacillation. If there is any vacillation, doubt, should I do this or not do this, it is the mind. If there are emotions, it is predominantly the mind. But when I am certain, there is a certainty that this should be done, this should not be done. When there is this certainty that is there, this is the vritti or the thought arising in the what? In the Vijnanamaya Kosha. So, buddhihi buddhindriyaihi sardham. The buddhi along with the jnanendriyas, savrittihi kartra lakshanaha. It has got the lakshana or it is of the nature of the doer, karta. Vijnanamaya kosha hasyat. This is called as the Vijnanamaya kosha. Pumsaha samsara karanam. This is the samsara karanam. Because the decisions I make depend upon what? My previous experiences. My previous experiences in this life. And some of the impressions or samskaras which I have carried from the previous lives. This buddhi make certain decisions, but the decision that this buddhi has made may not be the right decision. Because many times later on, I will say that I had made this decision, but unfortunately, that was not the right decision. I should not have done it. I should have done it in the other way. Maybe this was not the way of doing it. Why am I saying that? Because the buddhi itself has taken a decision at that moment based upon its previous experience and the present circumstances. But the decision taken by the buddhi need not be the right decision. The buddhi itself says, I am this body. I am sure. Who are you? I am sure I am this body. I am sure this world belongs to me. I am sure this person belongs to me. I am sure this house belongs to me. Though the mind is having those ideas, the surety or the definitiveness that I am this body, mind, sense, complex, is ultimately that decision or that vritti or that thought process which has come out of the Vijnanamaya Kosha. So it is Kartri Lakshanaha and Vijnanamaya Kosha Pumsaha Samsara Karanam. It is what? It is the Samsara Karanam. It is what makes or gives rise to the Dukkha or Samsara for a person. Because many times that's why I'm afraid of taking any decisions. 
I don't make decisions. Making any decisions is I always wait for somebody else to make decisions for me, because I know that I may not be right always. And many times I am not able to take the responsibility of the decisions I have made, and therefore that is why many of us try to avoid or evade making decisions. We let somebody else make decisions for us so that we can blame that person later if something goes wrong. But then the onus of making the decision of whatever the buddhi has decided is on me, which itself is a great cause for samsara. So it is a part of anatma. It is a cause for samsara for the human being. However, intelligent a person may be, a person's intellect is limited. That's what he says. The mind is limited. The intellect is limited. If I have to take a decision for five years ahead, I cannot. I don't have the sufficient inputs. Whatever I know of today and whatever I have gained from my past experience, I may project something and make a decision. But the buddhi is also temporary. It is not something which can see far ahead. It is not possible. Therefore, the buddhi is a cause of samsara. But one thing is, this vijnanamaya kosha is a very, very subtle kosha and it can reflect the consciousness and form the reflection of Atma in itself called as the Chida Bhasa. We have seen that in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. That is what is going to be told in the next verse, 185th verse. That is what is going to be told. He says here, Anuvraja Chitta Pratibhimba Shaktihi Vijnana Sanya Prakriter Vikaraha Jnana Kriyavan Ahamitya Jastram Dehendriya Dishva Bhimanyate Prisham says one thing because the buddhi is the subtlest part of the sukshma sharira this buddhi or vijnanamaya kosha acts as a perfect reflecting medium and the light of consciousness is reflected in this buddhi and the reflection of this consciousness the reflected consciousness in the buddhi is called as chida bhasa and this reflected consciousness chida bhasa along with the buddhi is what is called as ahankara or jiva which we have already seen this chida bhasa the reflection of consciousness in the buddhi attains an individuality and i call myself i and that i becomes the ahankara so this reflected consciousness along with the buddhi is called as either the ahankara or it is called as the jiva Many people say the small I, big I. Let us not say that. Let us say it is the ultimately that is the jiva, I can call it. That gives me that individuality, ahamiti. I am this body, mind, sense, complexity, individuality. I am different from everything else, the individuality. This particular individuality is what is God because this Vijnanamaya Kosha is a very subtle layer in which the Atma the Atma, you know, the consciousness or this Chaitanya, Atma Chaitanya is reflected. So he says, Anubraja Chitta Pratibimba Shaktihi. Pratibimba Shaktihi. This is a reflecting medium, Buddhi, being a very subtle thing. See, I look at myself in the mirror. I can see my reflection. Why? The reflecting surface, the mirror is extremely subtle. Even in a steel plate, if the steel plate is very bright, if I hold the steel plate, I can see my face. It may not be as clear as in the mirror, but still I can see my face. So whichever surface is subtle, whichever surface is very, very subtle and very, very clear, it can reflect whatever comes in front of it. Atma being all pervasive, Atma being everywhere, wherever there is a buddhi, in every jiva, wherever there is a Vijnana Mayakosha, there is a reflection of this Atma Chaitanya. So, Anubraja Chit Pratibimba Shaktihi. Chit Pratibimba Shaktihi. Anubraja following this capacity to reflect the Chit or the Sakshi Chaitanya Atma. Chit Pratibimba Shaktihi. It has got the capacity. 
it has got the shakti to reflect the chit or atma and following this it is called as vijnana sanyaha prakriter vikaraha even the reflection is false correct reflection is not the original reflection is false it depends upon the reflecting medium if i stand in front of a mirror the reflection is different if i stand in front of a very very you know a stainless steel surface the 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 reflection of my face is different therefore the reflection depends upon the reflecting surface therefore the reflection also is false chida bhasa is also mithya because the reflecting surface is buddhi the reflection of atma in this buddhi is also not the real therefore he says here vijnana sanyaha this reflecting medium with the reflection of the atma chit pratibimba is called as the vijnana sanyaha it is called as the vijnana maya it is prakritehe vikaraha it is the vikara of prakriti it is not the original it is a vikara of the prakriti it is the sukshma sharira what is sukshma sharira it is vikara of sukshma panchabhutas the sukshma panchabhutas have joined together to form the antakarna and buddhi is a part of antakarna so it is prakriti vikaraha that means what it is a modification of matter principle prakriti vikaraha gnana kriyavan ahamiti ajastra ajastram gnana kriyavan the one who is capable of knowing the one who is a doer after knowing something this vijnana maya kosha is able to take decisions anishchayatmika vritti and become a doer gnana kriyavan ahamiti ajasram and it calls itself i it gets an individuality it is a vijnana maya kosha along with the reflection of sakshi chaitanya atma which is called as the jiva or ahankara which says i i who am i here the i here that is referred to by the vijnana maya is the ahankara not the sakshi chaitanya atma there are two eyes when i say i the i which is the ahankara is also i am i that i or i am the original sakshi chaitanya atma i and what does vedanta tell me you are not this ahankara i the ahankara i is a mere reflection of you you are the original the bimba chaitanya the sakshi chaitanya atma you are that real i whereas this i which you think you are is nothing but a pratibimba chit pratibimba and the vijnana maya thinks aham this this aham is nothing but this ahankara aham iti ajasram dehendriyadishu abhimanyate it has got an identification with the deha and indriyas this vijnana maya kosha is the one who takes itself to be the real and it has got an abhimana dehadi indriya deha indriyadishu abhimanyante the one which has got an abhimana in the deha indriya mana etc and this is the vijnana maya which says i who am i when i say i there are two eyes here the anatma with the ahankara is one eye and the real eye which is the sakshi chaitanya atma behind this anatma but what does the vijnana maya take itself to be it takes itself to be the ahankara identifying itself with the body mind sense complex deha indriya dishu abhimanyate abhimanyate means it has got abhimana in the deha and indriya as i bhrisham because of the bhranti because of delusion because of avidya this bhranti is there therefore vijnana maya kosha is also not the atma atma is not the vijnana maya that is what is going to be talked about in the next two verses which we'll see in the next session om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushaka avastha shambhavi mestu prasanno stu gurustada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukham apnuyat 
ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ತಸ್ಸತ್